Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Our guest today is my good friend, the professor of chemistry at Cornell University, Dave Collum. Welcome back, sir. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> how are you? Yeah, how are you? I'm good. I'm That's... good. As I said, I'm missing a tooth, but um, besides <laughs> that, everything's right. Well, hopefully the tooth situation gets all cleared up. I wanted to bring you on to talk about everything that's happening in the markets. First, I wanted to start off, Dave, with, you know, why is the world so messed up right now? <laughs> like how? I don't. Well, you know, one could argue it's a fourth turning. I think that's not a bad theory. So, you know, for those who don't know the fourth turning, they're probably not listening to your podcast because <laughs> you got to be drawn in the wing nut. So, um, you know, uh, the, the only people who don't know about the fourth turning are not are not on social media of any kind right you couldn't possibly but so so you know by that model um the world was about to lose its shit in 2010 and it did and um it started to and we probably have another decade or two of of um and they say that you know bad things happen in every turning but in the fourth turning society responds badly right and that that seems to be kind of what's happening what do so, you what do you think, uh, Dave, about uh, you know Trump almost having his head blown off? Well, first I thought it was fake. Um, yeah, a lot I've, of people I, thought it was fake. I looked hard trying to find a good picture of his ear to show that it really got hit and things like that, but no one seems to be buying that, and they would be right. Social media would be all over it if there was a way right. to show that it was fake. Right. Um, it appears to me as though it was a very poorly set up hit by Secret Service. That's what that's where I currently stand. Yeah, that's the opinion um, of a lot of people online. Yeah, there, there's so many oddities. One of the things that's troubling is they don't even seem to care about getting it right anymore. So <clears throat> in the old days, they would have teed it up and they would have left very few fingerprints and you would have said, oh, wow, I can't believe a crazy guy shot him. And right. there's there's just no shred of evidence that the guy, even on the roof, did the shooting. Wow. There was a person on the scene. I remember I was watching the live uh, report and he was actually a person at the rally just supporting Trump. And he said... He was because he was by the shooter. He said that the he he believes that the shot or what it sounded like the shot came from behind him, not the actual shooter. Like it came from. Way... Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. one of the theories is the guy supposedly guarding that building, and the the head of the Secret Service, by the way, she you know her explanations for the mistakes were just outlandishly stupid. She yeah. said, for example, they didn't have anyone on the roof because the because it was too sloped. It had a seven and a half degree slope. <laughs> so, so as someone said, you know, I, I don't dare go down a wheelchair ramp, right? That's sort of what the slope of the building was. Right. Um, there was, you can't chalk it off to incompetence. I, I don't, I think the incompetence model, you and I could go to the site and figure out that roof had to be covered within 10 minutes. Right. Yeah. If you're actually secret service and you're supposed yeah. to cover off every roof of every building in the next and, like, and you're supposed to look for cracks. You're supposed to look for ventilating shafts that someone could come out of your, your... Now, you could imagine that Trump is being handed the, the dregs for Secret Service. Right. Uh, there's some evidence that they were dregs. Um, but, but still, again, you and I could go there and say, look, get a guy on this roof, this roof, this roof, and this roof. There's, there's a, it was not like he was in the middle of Manhattan. Hey everyone, I just found out about this local coin shop, Greenville Gold and Silver, that sells high quality used gold and silver jewelry by weight. You can invest in precious metals at crazy low premiums and show your swag at the same time. Some pieces sell for just a few bucks. They have the best prices, best selection, and new pieces regularly. And if you ever need to cash out, your metal value is secure. Greenville Gold and Silver, check out the link in the description below. Thanks. Right. Right. And so I, I, I cannot buy the model that um, that it was just an oversight. Did you hear it, uh, did you hear what Biden said last week? He's like, let's get Trump in the bullseye. Yeah, that could be bad <laughs> rhetorical <Wording>. skills. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, just it, bad it illustrates how bad he is. And, and but I saw a video today and you never know if you're seeing a deep fake or whatever, but one of the Lincoln Project guys who I think are some of the most despicable people, I think the Lincoln Project's really filled with with seriously fucked up people, yeah. um, said that they're going to have to shoot him. He said it explicitly. Wow. And so so um, and he was not joking. He was not being metaphorical. 
and and he's going to potentially regret having said that so boldly i think so what why do you, um why do you think dave there's so many people like on the left like i seen a video too of jack black's band member saying that you know that shooter shouldn't have missed yeah there's a bunch of you i you know i'm why willing do they, why over, do they think like that i'm willing to overlook that because in the heat of the moment with social media and stuff like that, it, it's so easy to blurt out a sort of an emotional response. Right. Right. And and so I could imagine a, a pseudo reasonable person blurting out a pseudo unreasonable statement. Right. right. And, no, um, and they could have thought it was a funny joke. I mean, it's not a funny joke, but if, if they were being facetious, that's different. So I can for, forgive mistakes like that. That one doesn't trouble me as much. I, what I can't forgive are some guys like, you know, Morning Joe, who for for years told us Biden is as sharp as a tack. And all of a sudden they got to <laughs> deal with the fact that he's a he's he's a bumbling idiot who who has no marbles left. And th they lied to us on stop. They had to know. Yeah, that that that's inexcusable to me. The mainstream media is a complete write down as far oh, as yeah. I'm concerned, it's absolutely which means insane. they're no better than Pravda. Right. They're yeah. no better than Pravda. So yeah. why do you then then let's say you're a lefty and you're listening to this. Why the hell do you believe the climate change? Why the hell do you believe in the NATO Ukraine discussion? Right. Why the hell do you believe China is our worst enemy? China might be our worst enemy, but you ought to stand back and say, OK, Let's ask if that's really true. They are certainly our biggest competitor. Right. But there's no, you know, when was the last time China invaded somebody? No, not like they put up walls ago. to stay on the inside. Right. Yeah. They, 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 <laughs> they tend to, they tend to try to keep us out, not them in, you know, you're not them, you know, from getting out. So, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's super interesting. And, and, you know, I, I, the way I look at it, Dave, is like, how do you think Russia and China look at America now when they see, Biden fully incompetent, the Trump having assassination attempts on his life. Do you think China and Russia are like this is a prime time to to step up on the world stage and just really take away the dominance and power from the U.S.? Do you think they're thinking it like that or no? Well, they certainly are pondering that. Right? right. And as we open our border to four million people, I'm sure they're shoving some people through that border. Oh, yeah. If, if our enemies are not smart enough to shove people through that border, then 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 we don't need to worry about them. <laughs> um, so so we have we have invited sleeper cells by the by the thousands potentially into the country. Oh, yeah. And and so we are destroying ourselves. And and, you know, when your enemy is destroying themselves, don't get in their way. Right. Let them do oh, it. Yeah. But. I also think that they should be looking and saying, you know, we are not safe with the United States in such bad shape. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I, I've got to figure there's countries around the world saying, you know, the U.S. is a very dangerous place now for world peace. Yeah, absolutely. And I bet you that uh, I, I and I bet you that probably really hurts their their dominance on the world stage. Like you have a you have literally a ex president being assassinated. You have the pre current president who can't put a sentence together. So do people just finally see through the lies and say, okay, the military industrial complex and that deep machine really runs the U.S., not any presidents? Well, I think those of us who've been digging into the dusty corners have concluded that years ago, actually. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but th there's something the the. A worst case scenario would be if they killed him, right? Right. That would have been a problem. And even worst case scenarios, if going forward, they then kill him. Right, right. If the first assassination. So, 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 was, so yeah. y y that's right. So the miss was Lincoln, bad. Lincoln I, Lincoln, I think he had a failed assassination attempt his first time. Oh, is that right? I yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, there were definitely failures. They tried to take out his whole cabinet. Right. And 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 they, they missed. Right. And so... Um, they took out Lincoln, of course. But, you know, the guy who made up the joke, by the, besides that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play, right? That's a funny joke, right? Um, one could view that as insensitive if you'd made that joke the day after Lincoln died. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's still a funny joke. Um, and uh, and uh, it's just crazy what's happening. You know, I, I think it is. And it's troubling. Yeah, it's very troubling. And, and the markets don't care.
Yeah, and the markets don't care. You see Trump almost get assassinated. Everything's just moving along normal. Well, I've argued that political events don't move markets very well. The, no. The, the markets go right past those. What do you think but, moves markets? Just algorithms these days? Is the algorithm pushing a fake market in the stock market? Just all... Well, eight- yeah. I, I mean, there is this steady flow of money in. I, I could also believe that... Um, that that in an effort to keep Trump out, that they they're trying to keep the markets floating till the elections. But now the Democrats have no one on the field. So so yeah. uh, so it's it's unclear. I thought maybe the world would flip and say, OK, let's endorse Trump. Let's accept it for what it is. And let's just try to cut set it up in a way that he can't do things we don't want him to do. Right. That right. sort of thing. Yeah. And and one of the ways you do that is by cutting deals with them. Say, by the way, Donald, you know, we won't do this if you don't do that. That sort of thing. He, he would not be below that. Yeah. And, and I'm sure uh, he would take a deal like that, too, if the whole mm-hmm. world. if if uh, But you, you even see after uh, Reagan's assassination attempt, uh, the whole country went red. Almost. Right. Um, it. it I, I don't know why it would move people to vote differently, although fence sitters, you can imagine some guy saying, you know, I'm thinking about voting for Trump. Now you can right. say, I can, you can imagine that person saying I have to vote for Trump now. Yeah, and you could imagine that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, I realized that there's I've got this little voice in my head that says the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And so to the extent that they're willing to go to that extreme to deal with him, I go, OK, I'm, I'm voting for him. Um, there's there's no evidence that these are good guys trying to take off the take out the next Hitler. That that meme is is worn out. Right. You know, and people who believe that are they're really pretty stupid. Right. <laughs> he, he was in office for four years and, and I don't see any swastikas. I don't, right, right. I saw no evidence that he was trying to become a, a an emperor. You just, know, make, the, just making the country better. That's all. <laughs> well, you know, and you can disagree with whether he's he's the right guy for that, but it, it it's really I think you'd have a terrible time arguing Biden was better than Trump. I that would Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I, I would like to think you don't have to be a fan of Trump to draw that conclusion. Oh yeah. Absolutely. But I think I think Biden's been horrible. And I, I didn't I didn't think I've heard Obama was horrible and I I can I can I can gripe about shit he did. Right. But mm-hmm. but I but but I don't remember being horrified except for the fact that he appeared to be trying to push a lot of conflicts in the Middle East, which I had, you know, and a lot of fake Syrian gas attacks and shit that he obviously knew about and was trying to use as an excuse. Scott Horton's book, Enough Already, which is a good book, although painful to read, um, he, in some sense, he lets both Obama and Trump off the hook. Really, in the sense, in, in the sense that he said the pressure was just enormous yeah. on them to to do the militaristic things they did, and even Trump did more than I remembered. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, absolutely. So uh, you know, so I, our our military industrial complex is 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 a fundamental problem, yeah, and I yeah. think they're going to get us into World War Three or destroy the empire or whatever. And I, and I think I, that's what JFK warned us about, say, you know, this military industrial complex and it's a highly knit machine that, you know, right. they're they're going to be running the country in the world soon. Not no presidents, not no. You right. Know. Yeah. So Eisenhower called it JFK. Tri- JFK tried to dismantle it. Right. Eisenhower. They made, they the made sure that, that right. didn't happen. Yeah. yeah that's right. I see um, that. Eisenhower, and curiously, doesn't get enough credit for his his civil rights. Yeah, Eisenhower. If you actually look at what happened in the civil rights movement, the real seminal stuff was under Eisenhower, not under Kennedy. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's the you know it was during his time that he that he he opened up the schools to integration and stuff like that. And and, I really I thought it was JFK. No way. Mm, No, Eisenhower did the big stuff. Eisenhower opened the door. Really? Wow, that's super interesting. Well, he also they, built the interstate highway system, right? What a, Wow. He saw the Autobahn when he was in Germany and said, we got to have that. Wow, what a smart guy. Well, right. Dave, I, I just want to thank you so much for coming down to Wall Street Silver. What an incredible chat we've had today. And hopefully, you know, as everything develops in the future, I know the next time we have you on, there's going to be some more news and updates. Oh, but, God, yeah. yes. <laughs> so I'd love to have you back on in the future. 
Yeah. Someone said, you know, let's have it when some event occurs. I said the morning's still young. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Awesome. Yeah. Talk to you soon, Dave. You got it.